Hi, Westridge. On Sunday, Ryan asked us the question, does our value of Jesus match his worth? This week, as we engage multiple ways of worship, I just want to invite us into the process of cultivating our hearts for the type of worship that Mary showed us when she anointed Jesus with her perfume. One of the ways that we're going to do that tonight is by engaging some scripture to remind us about who Jesus was and what he did for us. And we're going to do that with, in conjunction with some prayer postures. Now, for some of you, this might be new. You may not even know what a prayer posture is. And I just wanna let you know that it might feel a little bit funny at first because sometimes when we do new things, it feels different. And yet sometimes I think we need to do some different things if we want to reach a new level of understanding and maybe a new level of worship. You know, one of the things that I noticed about Mary's expression of worship is that it was an outward expression. It was this action that reflected her inner heart. And so I just wanna invite us into that process. And another thing I noticed about Mary's expression of worship is that it seemed to be solely focused on Jesus. She didn't worry about the people around her it didn't seem like she was concerned about what they were thinking or what they might think about her because she was so concerned about what Jesus thought. And so again, I just want to invite us into that same attitude, into that same posture. Will you join me? So let's begin. We're going to start with a posture of kneeling. So I invite you to find a comfortable spot and kneel down. Philippians 2, 6 through 7. Christ Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Jesus made himself nothing. As you kneel, I invite you to acknowledge the sacrifice. Jesus humbled himself for a specific purpose, and that was to make right what had gone so wrong in the garden. And that's access to him, life with him eternally. And you know, he offers this to the woman who is drawing water at the well. As I read this passage, I wanna invite you to hold your hands out, a posture of receiving, as maybe you can imagine Jesus saying these words to you. He said, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus is offering us living water. Thank you, Jesus, for this offer. He also tells us that he is our good shepherd. And so I wanna invite you to wrap your arms around yourself. Jesus leads us, he cares for us, he loves us. John writes, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. So I invite you to feel God's love for you. Know that he loves you. Imagine him looking down at you and loving you. All right, let's move to a new posture. So go ahead and rise to a standing position with your arms extended out. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. 
Jesus gives us life by laying down his life. The next position is to go ahead and spread out your arms. 1 John 3.16 says, This is how we know what love is, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Jesus gave up his own life so that we could live with him. But Jesus doesn't force us to take it. In fact, he knew that several Jewish people were refusing to take what he was offering. And he tells them in John chapter 5, verse 40, you are not willing to come to me so that you may have life. So I want to invite you to just put your hands on your heart and evaluate. Are you willing? Are you willing to come to him? Are you willing to receive what he's offering? Are you willing to reflect value? Are you willing to worship him? The great news, the good news, the gospel, is that the level of our willingness has absolutely no bearing on Jesus' willingness to come and pay the price for you. It has no bearing on how much he loves you because he has loved you with an everlasting love. And that alone is reason to worship him. And so I want to invite you to our last posture. Your hands are on your heart, and I just invite you to stretch them up to the heavens as if you're a child reaching up for his or her father. And let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. May we all cultivate hearts that are willing to worship.